Father, I ask you in your holy name, Lord. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, that the words that are about to be spoken, it is your words, the scriptures, Lord, may they penetrate the mind, the body, and the soul. May they bring a renewness of life. May they, Lord, rid us, Lord, of, of, the, of, the, of the plans and the schemes of the evil one and bring wisdom so that we may hear you, Lord, hear that still small voice that would speak deep within us, Lord, that we would grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of you, Lord, and that, Lord, that we would bear good fruit. We are not saved by what we do, but we are saved by your work alone to do good things, to honor you before all people, to live in holiness and in righteousness. Bless your name, Lord. Your will be done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. The message this morning is entitled, We Cannot Be Shaken. Amen. And I am speaking in regards to the Christian. The Christian cannot be shaken. We cannot be shaken. Now that, that word shaken, the definition, the biblical definition of the word shaken is to be removed. To be removed. Now, within the Christian church, there are some people that believe that you can lose salvation. And there are some people that believe that you can never lose salvation, no matter what you do. Well, I firmly believe that what the Bible teaches is that you can walk away from God. Amen? We look at, we look at Peter, we look at Jude. Peter, for a brief moment, walked away from the Lord. He denied him three times, but he came back to him. Jude, on the other hand, walked away. He sold him out, walked away, and he had a choice to return. He did, because he took the 30 pieces of silver and he chunked it back at the Pharisees. And at that moment, Judas had an opportunity to go back to Jesus, but he didn't. But he went into a field and he took his own life. And so you can walk away from the salvation of the Lord. And th th that is where my personal opinion. Now, I'm not here to argue or to disagree with anyone else, but I believe that, yes, when you're saved, you are saved. I believe that. But I also believe that you can walk away from the Lord because we have always had something that God will always honor and that's free will. We will always have free will. God did not create you to be a puppet. He created you to always have free will. We look at the angels, they had it, but one third of the angels fell. They had free will, they walked away. They chose to follow Satan. And so God has always given his creation and they always will have free will. And though you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, as you, as you call upon him, you're saved. You repent of your sin, you're saved. But the Bible does teach us, it says, finish the race faithfully. Why? We are called to finish the race faithfully because through Christ we can. Amen? We can. He is able, he is willing. And so we surrender daily. That's what Jesus said. If anyone wants to be my disciple, deny yourself. Pick up your cross, not his cross, but your cross, which is the testimony of Christ in your life, and follow him daily. That's what Jesus said. And when you do that daily, I'm speaking to that Christian, you cannot be shaken. Meaning, you cannot be removed. You cannot be removed. I believe only you can remove yourself. You know, not just as a Christian, but as a human being, our worst enemy is ourself. Amen. It's not necessarily Satan, or your spouse, or your boss. It's yourself. I know I've been there as an unbeliever and as a Christian. I've experienced both as my worst enemy being myself. But when you follow the Lord, you cannot be shaken. You cannot be removed. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And today we live in a world that is becoming more and more dark 
chaotic, corrupt. We see it. We see what's happening. Amen? Amen? Talk to me, church. We see what's happening in the world. They're calling good evil and evil good. We live in a backward society. Where, where marriage has come against uh, 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 to a redefinition in the eyes of the secular world. They're, they're reinstituting what God instituted to be holy and to be sacred. There's a redefinition of marriage, of genderism. The, 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 uh, as always, abortion is not something new in this world. In the Old Testament, when they worshiped Baal, B-A-A-L, the false religion Baal, one of the main things of their, of their worship was that they would sacrifice their firstborn. And they would put the body of their firstborn inside the walls of their home. And they thought that that would bring them blessing. That was a practice in ancient times. So they were sacrificing their children. Satan has always wanted to destroy our youth. And that is what we see happening in the school system today. Now, people can say, Pastor, you're being political. No, I'm not. Because these issues I just mentioned are not political issues. They are moral issues. They are what is right and what is wrong. What brings life and what brings death. The Bible speaks very clearly about these things. Now, I condemn nobody, no one. Who am I to condemn? I condemn nobody. I do not condemn Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives. I condemn no one. Who am I? But we are messengers. We know the word of God and we just tell the truth with love with compassion, but with a seriousness. And God deals with the rest. In America, Christian, Christian in America, you're not persecuted for your faith right now. But as I have said for a very long time, one day the United States Constitution will be done away with. They're already trying to do that right now by adding Washington, D.C. as another state. And other, and other uh, 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 Puerto Rico to come in as a nation. Why? Because they're trying to manipulate what our founding fathers have done. And that is to manipulate the Supreme Court and all these things. But here's what I'm going to tell you. My faith is not in politics. I don't care who's in the, president, the president's house. I don't care who's in Congress. I know who's on the throne. And that's Jesus. Amen? Amen? Now... I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm a Christian, and therefore I will not be shaken. There are going to be a lot of bad things that will happen in this nation and in this world, but I will not be shaken. You will not be shaken, because our kingdom is of another place. Our hope, our joy, is of another place. It's time for the Christian to get their eyes back on Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to get our, our hopes not back into America, and I love America. Many veterans here. I was raised through the military. And I thank God for our military. I thank God for those who serve. I thank God for my son who serves today in the police force. It's, it's, a, it's a profession that is hated now. And that is what Satan does. He'll take things and make them what they may not really be to blow up and say, hey, we have major issues in this world. Look, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 24. He said, in the end there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now we know when, in the Greek, when it says nation against nation, we know that he's talking about race. Jesus very clearly teaches in Matthew 24, if you know the Bible, as a good Bible student, you know that when Jesus said that, he was talking about race against race in the last days. And that is what we see happening always. Racism, it's not just to hate your skin color. Racism, it has to do with your relationship with God. When you don't have a relationship with God, you hate people. Cain was the first one who demonstrated racism. He hated his brother and he killed him. Because of racism. Because Cain did not honor God. And if you don't honor God, you won't honor your brethren. And so from the days of Cain and Abel to today, we still have that hatred of people. We try and make it out to be its skin color. It's not just skin color. You look at Adolf Hitler killing other so-called Europeans, white people, so to speak. It had nothing to do with their skin color. It had to do with their race, their religion, their belief in who? God. And so let's get smart about these things. And Jesus said... 
that all that can be shaken shall be shaken. And this is exactly what we see happening in the world today, whether you like it or not. But the Christian shall not be shaken. We shall not be removed. Look in Psalm 55, 22, it says this. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He, God, he will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Just leave that up there for a moment and let that sink in. He will never, God will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Who are the righteous? The Bible in Romans 3 says, but we have a righteousness from heaven. It's faith in Christ. Jesus is your righteousness, Christian. And so because we have faith in Christ, a relationship with Jesus Christ, God calls us the righteous. So Christian, stop looking down on yourself and start acting like the righteous people of God and honoring him in all you do and all that you're about. Hate sin and love what is of God. Because there has been a high calling put on your life, Christian. You've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ who can wash away all the sins, no matter what you've done, no matter who you were. Christ loves you. He has always loved you. Even when you were knee deep in your sin and unbelief, he has always loved you to the fullest. Christ's love never changes. We may, but he never changes. So cast all your burden. Cast your burden. Well, what is that burden? We will go through trials. We will go through tribulation. We will have difficulties in this world, but cast it upon him. And he will give you strength. He will give you wisdom. He will give you guidance. He will give you direction. Apart from him, you're lost. I'm lost. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Again, to be removed. Amen? Amen. Genesis 25, verse 29 through 34 says this in the New King James Version. There were two brothers. And again, the message this morning is entitled, We Cannot Be Shaken. We cannot be shaken. The, and that's the believer of Christ. We cannot be shaken. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you. There were two brothers, Jacob and Esau. And they were both, <laughs> they were both at this time deceivers. They were not right before God. We know Jacob, the Bible teaches, was one of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Jacob was a little conniving, little, you know, little, little, little guy. He didn't, he didn't do what he was called to do, and, and he had his eye on his big brother Esau and his birthright, because in those biblical times, the first son had the rights of the father when the father passed away. You know what I'm saying? Amen? And so... Even though the word of God was given to the mother when they were born, these two twins were born, Esau and Jacob, it said that the older will serve the younger. Jacob already knew this, but yet Jacob wanted to go ahead of God and try and steal the birthright of Esau. Let's read about this. It says here, and I'm tying this into the message here. It says, now Jacob cooked a stew. These are grown men by now. And Esau came in from the field and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? With a question mark. What is it to me? I'm going to die anyways. Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and a stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He, he looked at what God had given to him and what was coming to him and he threw it away. The plan of salvation came through Christ. And people look at Jesus today and they just throw it away. They don't want to have nothing to do with it. Not realizing that every human being will kneel before Christ and confess that he is Lord. Amen. One day, every single human being, I don't care if you were born in the Amazon, if you were born in Syria, if you were born in Alvin, Texas, I do not care where you were born. God loves you and God is able to reach out to you. If God is able to reach out to every 
strain of grass in the ground all over the world and tell it when to grow and when not to grow, then God knows how to reach every single human being regardless of your race, your color, your religious upbringing. God can reveal himself to you. There is only one way to, to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus says that, not Michael. Jesus said that. And we are not a Christian because we happen to live in America where there's a Bible at every table and a church around every corner. No, we've all had an opportunity to go the wrong way. But Christian, you chose Christ because Christ first chose you. And do not be shaken by the signs of the times in the last days that we are in, in this chaotic, dark time. The world is going to become more corrupt and evil as the days and the weeks and the months and the years come. We are seeing that. Esau despised his birthright. He just didn't sell it. He despised it. Many people hate God today. Don't fool yourself. Don't kid yourself. There are many God haters in this world. They're not your enemy. Love them. Pray for them. Show them the gospel by the way you live your life. If you are a Christian, you are called to lead people to the cross of Jesus. Period. It's not just my job. It is all of our job. We all have the honor and the privilege to live the gospel. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, he sells his birthright. Jacob gets it. And we know the rest of the story. But the point of this, why I'm reading this, is because Esau despised it. Esau had an ugly attitude towards God, his father, and his brother. And there are still people like that in this world today. Now, go with me to Hebrews. Remember Esau, okay? Go with me to Hebrews 12, verse 12 through 17. If you have your Bible, follow me. If not, it'll be on the screen and online on the screen there. I want to talk about renewing your spiritual vitality, meaning your spiritual strength. I want to talk to you through the Word of God. Let the Word of God encourage you and strengthen you because you're not going to find any strength any, from anywhere else but other than the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The unknown Christian writer, the book of Hebrews, writes to the church and says this in verse 12. He says, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. As a Christian, every morning before you get up out of the bed, remind yourself of who you are. That you're not just a human being, but you're a redeemed human being. You have an obligation, an honor, and a privilege to walk with Jesus. Amen? Make straight your path. What does Jesus say about heaven? The road to hell is wide and many shall find it. And the road to heaven is narrow and only a few shall find it. You must be narrow-minded today. Have you ever had anyone tell you that, Christian? You are narrow-minded. There are many ways to heaven. There are Buddhists. There's Islam. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. Not through the Catholic Church. Not through the Baptist Church. Not through the Pentecostal Church. Through Jesus Christ. We have to undo ourselves and to get all done up again in the actual Word of God. Because man can make a mess of things. Just look at the world today. Make straight your path and make sure you're walking with Jesus. Make sure that Jesus is walking with you. Whatever is lame, dislocated, spiritually speaking, will be healed. That's what the Bible says. Verse 14 says this. It says, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. If you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ, there must be holiness in your life. And what does holiness mean? Holy means being set apart for a religious purpose. 
Jesus said, I come not to do my will, but the will of the Father. Jesus was holy because he was being used by the Father to be set apart to do a specific work. Exactly, that's what it means, holy. So we are to pursue peace with all people. If you have any unforgiveness, you need to forgive as you have been forgiven, Christian. See, we can speak to the world, but we need to speak to the church because there needs to be healing in the church in order for the church to be effective to go out and win the world. So we must have peace. Jesus says the peace that he gives, he gives not like the world gives. It's a temporary, it's a conditional peace. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. That's the peace of the world. Jesus says, I love you no matter what. I'll love you to your very last breath, but at the end, the judgment. Choose today whom you will serve. That is the attitude of Christ. And so we cannot be shaken. We pursue peace with all people and holiness, because without that, if we're not set apart by God, for God, we won't see God. At the end of our life, we will not stand at the judgment seat of Christ, but we will stand at the great white throne judgment where all shall be condemned. We must be a holy people. We must be, be set apart for the things of God, for the purpose of God. Verse 15 says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. You hear what I'm saying? That that's why I tell you, you can walk away from God. It says, you must be careful because, or you'll fall short of the grace of God. What is the grace of God? His son, Jesus Christ. And if you're not careful, if you don't pay attention to your life and walk with Christ, you can miss out. You can fall short of the grace of God. You ever, has anyone ever fought, fell in short? They're at the paying for something at, at the grocery store and, and you fall short a dollar or two dollars and that checker just will not budge. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen? No. You owe 22 cents. Take something out. What do you want to do? I mean, some checkers have been like that. But there's that one behind you that goes, I'll pay the rest. See, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. He doesn't want you to fall short. He's always looking out for you. So be looking to him. Walk with him. I want to encourage you. Look at verse 15 again. Looking carefully, it says, Lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Many people who knew God became defiled because they fell short of the glory of God. They became bitter. They were unforgiving. They were despising. We should not have any of this within us. If you are having these things, you have the world in you. Get it out of you guys, please, while there is still life in you. Verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now look, fornicator means a sexually immoral. And profane, what does profane mean? Profane, it sums up everything. Profane means in regards to spiritual matters it means not being devoted meaning not being devoted to God see because when you're profane you are not devoted to God but you are undevoted that's what profane actually means and so if you are a sexually immoral and undevoted to God you're like Esau who despised his birthright and sold it out verse 17 says for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Later on, he came to his daddy as his daddy was dying. And he says, Dad, here I am for my birthright. And, and he, was, he was tricked twice. Esau was by Jacob. He was tricked twice. The devil can trick you too several times. Amen. Amen? You fall for the same plans of the devil once, twice, three times. He's got you. Jacob pulled it over the, the wool over his brother's eyes twice. And so when, when Esau came to get the birthright from, from his father Isaac, what did Isaac say? I thought you were Jake, I thought you were, uh, you know, 
Esau, Jacob came and he pretended to be, oh my goodness, I have nothing for you, Esau. Esau cried, please, Father, give me something. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. People are going to be banging on the door of heaven. Please let me in. I, I repent now. I, I recognize the birth right now. But the heavenly angels will drag that, sadly, that person off to the flames of the lake of fire. That's what the Bible teaches. Because they despise their birthright. Look, we were born into this world. But we became introduced to sin. We already had sin nature in us. You don't have to teach a child to, tell the, 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 to, to lie. They naturally lie. A child naturally is greedy. You have to teach a child to tell the truth. Because that's good. And we don't have good in us. We naturally are bad people. Naturally. Sin nature is in us. And so God has spent the rest of your life calling you to come back to him to receive the birthright, the one that came through Jesus Christ. He, Jesus is the firstborn amongst the righteous. He is the first fruits. He is the best of what is yet to come. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him. Get your eyes off of this world and get your eyes up into eternity. The Bible says that. What? Cast your eyes upon things that are above, not on things that are below and on the earth. Why? Because if you do, you'll get distracted. Remember Peter? Peter walked on the water. What did Peter do? He looked to the left and the right and he began to sink. Why? Because he stopped looking at Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your hope in Jesus. Put all your joy and your peace in Jesus. Amen? Hey, I'm just a preacher. I've got my own walk to, to, to deal with. My wife will tell you, she'll tell you all my imperfections. Amen? Wives are good at that. They're called helpers. Amen? Men, you might as well just say, agree with me. Happy wife, happy life. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's why the Apostle Paul tells all the young people, single people, hey, it's better to stay single. No, oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, I love my wife. I thank God for my wife. And I always beg her, please hang out with me when we go to heaven. Because the Bible says that you're not going to be married anymore. Some women just said, amen. <laughs> but, but, but I said, please hang out with me. And I said, like, I don't know. I may be down the road. I don't want to share a mansion with you. And we joke around like that. Hey, you can. You know, why not? I mean, that is where our joy is, right? Doesn't the Bible say, store your treasures in heaven where no thief can break in and steal and no moth can, can destroy? Amen. Isn't that where your joy is? Our daughter Gracie, she's up there in heaven. I look forward to heaven. When I think about heaven, I get start smiling. I start getting happy because that's where my kingdom, that's where I'm from. Yeah, my birth certificate says Houston, Texas. And yes, I love this nation. and I love all the people in this world. But my home is from another place. And I look forward to going home to be with Jesus for eternity. Amen. And I live for Christ as Christ lived for me. And the same should be with all of us, church. Don't be re-educated by, by the secular church out there. The church is led astray. There are many churches in this land um, that, that are dancing to the music of the world. They're not preaching biblical truths anymore. They're not reading the gospel. And I'm not judging them, but I'm speaking truth. Because if I cannot speak it, and if, I, if I stand at the altar of truth and don't speak truth to you, then I'm doing a disservice to God and to you. But there are so many people who think they're Christians and Jesus will tell them, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You only get one shot at heaven and only one shot at hell. Get right. No one will be standing with you before the judgment of Christ. No one, you and the Lord. That's it. Put your faith in him. Put your hope in him. Esau begged, but there was nothing for him. Many will beg in that day, and there will be nothing for them. But for the Christian, I tell you, you cannot be shaken. You cannot be shaken. Amen? Hebrews 12, 18 says this. Hebrews 12, 18 through 24. And again, what we just read, it said, Esau sought it diligently with tears. There were tears in the eyes of Esau. But what does the Bible say? That in heaven, God will wipe away every tear. There will be no more crying, no more death. Woo! Amen? 
There'll be no crying in heaven. But Esau, he cried. He sought diligently with tears, but there was nothing for him. The Bible says that in hell, there'll be weeping and mourning and gnashing of teeth forever and ever and ever. I think tears will be there. God doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want that for you. Please, let, let, let there be a life-changing decisions being made today in your life. Those watching online, and I know there, there are many watching online, please, let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you. It says here in verse 18, Hebrews 12, 18, it says, and I want to tell you, this is touching God and His kingdom. You cannot be shaken, but I want you to know that you can touch His kingdom because He's touched you. He's anointed you. He's blessed you. He's forgiven you, Christian, so you can touch His kingdom. You want to see where a biblical text tells you this? From the Old Testament to the New Testament? Watch this. Hebrews 12, 18 says this, For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded and if so much as a beast touches the mountain it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow and so terrifying was the sight that Moses said I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Amen? What is this saying? Before I go to verse 22. This is saying, it's giving up, it's reminding us of what happened in the Old Testament when Moses was going up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments and God tells Moses to tell the people, do not let them follow you up here. They are not to step foot on the mountain that you're coming up to visit me on. If an animal touches them, the foot of the mountain, that animal is going to be killed. If anyone touches the foot of this mountain, they're going to die. They do not belong here. This is holy ground. That's what the Lord was telling Moses. And Moses told the people that. And, and the people begged, no, we want to hear the voice of God. We want to hear God like you hear God. And so God says, you know what? Okay, okay. Tell them to come. So they all came around the, uh, the edge of the mountain. And what happened? God began to speak. And Moses was like, oh, yes, praise you, God. He had a reverent fear and awe. He was praising God. And everyone else was like, tell them to stop. Tell them to stop. They were trembling in fear because they were not right. They, didn't, they couldn't stand to hear the voice of God because their hearts were not right. They were about to die. But Moses was in the glory of God. It's a long story, guys. But that was the Old Testament. But look at what the verse 22 says. But, but, you have come to Mount Zion and into the city of the living God. He's talking to the Christian in verse 22 now. Not to the Old Testament people. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. What does it say in verse 22 through 23, 24? It's saying, you Christian, you do not have to do what happened in the Old Testament. You can come up this mountain you can talk to God now. What does Hebrews 4.16 says? Let us boldly come before the throne of grace with confidence that we may find grace and mercy in our time of need. Hebrews 4.16. God is telling the righteous, come to me. Come up the mountain. You can live. This is where you will find life. We are surrounded by heavenly angels. We don't worship them. We don't light candles to them. But they are ministering spirits as they came to him, minister to Jesus after his 40 days of fasting. The Bible says that the angels came to minister to him. He didn't worship him, the angels. And so the angels, we are surrounded by a great cloud of, of faithful witnesses, the church of Jesus Christ. We ha have no excuse. We have Jesus, the mediator between us and the Father. We can touch the kingdom of God. Amen? We can touch the kingdom of God, Christian. We cannot be shaken. We cannot be stirred. We cannot be moved. So what is your deal today? What is it that the devil is confronting you with? 
any unbelief, depression, anxiety, any thoughts of of anger, rage within you, sexual immorality, lust within you, a, a, a deceitful heart, lying, greed. What is it that, what is it that, the, the, what is the card of sin that Satan is dealing with you today? And it's not just for you, but when you fold those cards down and when you give God the glory, you begin to walk with Christ, you've repented of your sins, you've asked him to be your Lord and Savior. It's not just about you, but it's about others now. You're a Christian, you're saved, you've got the biblical promise that you will not be shaken, that you will not be moved, that you will not be distracted. But as a Christian, it's about others. You're called to be a blessing to others who are still in darkness, who are in chaos. You remember, you Christian, you are the hands, you are the feet, the eyes and the ears of the body of Christ. He is the head, but we are his body and we are called to listen to the head and to be his hands, to be his feet, to touch those that have a need of the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Love all people. But tell them the truth with compassion, with kindness, and with patience and long suffering. Be patient with all people, but tell them what the Word of God says. Do not be discouraged, but be of great encouragement today. This is a battle for us Christian every day. Satan knows, Satan knows that God has given you permission to come up the mountain. Did you hear that? So therefore, Satan meets you at the cleft of that mountain. And he says, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? You know, you, you don't pray as like you should. You don't know the word of God like you should. You know that little lie you told the other day? He's the accuser. And sometimes he accuses us and he's right. <laughs> he's right. But I think about what King David said after he was confronted by the prophet Nathan for his sin, King David said, create in me a new heart and a steadfast spirit. Look, this is unplanned, I'm sorry. Go with me to Psalm 51, please. I wanna, I'm gonna read, because I was reading this this morning, early this morning. And in Psalm 51, in the New King James Version, look at verse 14. Actually, uh, uh, verse 14 for right now. King David, was found guilty of not only adultery, but of murder. And he's the king. But something spoke to me, because look, look at verse 14. He's speaking about his sin. He says, in Psalm 51, verse 14, he says, Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. I'm going to go to 15 in just a minute, but look at that. That tells me right there that David had guilt. Christian, you have guilt about some of the things you've done. David had guilt. He had guilt of bloodshed. Look, pull that up, please. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, oh God, the God of my salvation. He, he, he's saying, I'm, I'm dealing with this guilt. And some of you, you may not have no guilt, that's good, but you, you felt God and you've had guilt. He says, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Look at verse 15. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when your mouth is speaking something, it's in your heart. And if it's in your heart, it's going to show through your hands and your feet. You're going to be put to action. King David had a guilt on him. And some of us, we are not really aware of how we have wronged the Lord. But there are some who are aware of how they've wronged the Lord, they've wronged people. And when you come to the cleft of Mount Zion to come into the presence of God, Christian, and the devil meets you there, he says, whoa, 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 you, you cannot go up there. What do you, look, remember what you did? King David confronted that same guilt. And, 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 but David knew it. He said, behind me, Satan, so to speak. He goes, I am here to praise God. I am here to speak and to praise. See, there's a difference between speaking and praising. Speaking is when you, you tell the people. Praise is when you're giving it to God. 
I thank you, God. Hey, do you know that the goodness comes from the Lord? There's a difference between speaking and praising. And David said, I may have done that, Satan. You're right. But out of my way, I'm going back up to the mountain to receive the goodness of the Lord. You cannot be shaken. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Now look at Hebrews 12, verse 25 through 29. As we come to the last part of our scripture, I want to read this to you. It says, see that you do not refuse him, that's God, who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused God, him, who spoke on earth, that's Christ, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? That's why I said, you can walk away from your salvation. You see that right there? If we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, we can walk away. I don't think you can lose your salvation. I believe you give it up. You can walk away from it. We are called to walk daily with Jesus. That's what Jesus teaches, not Michael Garcia. Jesus teaches this. And it goes on to say here, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, in our future time, church, once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Do you know, do you see the movies that have been coming out lately about asteroids coming to the earth? Have you noticed that? About signs in the heavens? Uh, they, they see it starting to see more unidentified flying objects. I mean, think about this, guys. There's a movie that came out here. What is it called? Greenland? Or is that what it was? Uh, with with the, the last year, they came out a really big movie. And, and it was talking about this big old rock that was going to come and just destroy the earth. There's been more and more movies like that. There's been more and more discussion about that. Because the Bible, Jesus teaches that he will shake the heavens and the earth once more. When was the last shaken? The flood of Noah. He shook the earth so much that the, 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 the deep wells from within the ocean opened up and it flooded the whole earth. Even Mount Everest at 29,000 feet, yeah, was flooded. Incredible. God's, and it says here, he will do it again. Look, look at that, verse 26. Yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. The earth is not just going to be shaken in our very near future, but so is the heavens. There are three heavens the Bible teaches. Heaven one, that's our atmosphere where the planes are and the birds. Heaven number two, that's where space is, where the planets. And heaven, the third heaven, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, the third heaven is known as the very place of God in heaven. I believe it's speaking of the first and the second heavens. That's just my opinion. Because that's where sin is. There is no sin in the third heaven. There is sin on the earth, the first and the second heavens. And so these things are going to be shaken. Look at verse 27. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. God is shaking things to remove things. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. The Christian will remain. You hear that? We're going to be able to stand before the presence of God while all this goes on. And God is going to be looking at you while he shakes the heavens and the earth because of its sin. But you're going to stand. You're going to stand and you're going to persevere. And you're going to testify. When all the world is going to hell, you Christian, you're going to stand and you're not going to be shaken. I'm telling you, we're, near, we're on the cusp of seeing something great happen. Verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. That's why I say, Christian, we cannot be shaken. So let us have grace. Grace is God gives you things you don't deserve. Let us have grace. We're going to receive things from God that we don't deserve because we are seeking Him in holiness and righteousness by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And I've told you before, church, fear to have the fear of God drives you to God. See, if you have a fear of men, it drives you away from each other, right? 
But when you have the fear of God, it drives you the opposite. It drives you to God. Because you have, right there, you have reverence. Meaning you have respect. You know that He is the one who can save you. So you have a fear of God, you go to Him. He is our strong tower. He is our refuge. Amen? Amen? Amen! Amen! And so that is what you do. You go to Him. Look, verse um, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. He burns away the things that don't belong in our life. Amen. Let the heavenly holy fire, the Holy Spirit, come upon you. And the last one, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 7 through 10 says this. Paul says, and I just want to encourage you. But we have this treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You hear that? We have this treasure now in our physical bodies. The kingdom of God is in us now. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. You cannot be shaken because God is in you. Jesus is in you. Amen? You cannot be shaken because He is in you. We are hard pressed on every side. Amen? And I'm not talking about your wife when she's budging you like this. Okay? We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. So stop whining. What does Pastor Eric say? If you got time to whine, you got time to pray. Is that right? Okay. Yes, sir. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. God has not forgotten you. Struck down, you may be down for a little bit, but you're not destroyed. Always caring about in the body, our body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that also the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. What Jesus did on the cross, his death and resurrection, is to be seen in our life on the earth. Amen. I thought that should get a bigger amen. amen. I thought y'all call yourselves Christians people of God. Amen? Amen? Come on now! Jesus said on the cross, it is finished! Amen! Amen. He destroyed that devil. He destroyed the devil. Right. Every demon trembles in fear of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did I say amen? amen? Come on church! We need to get alive and get on fire for the Lord. If they're out there protesting in the spirit of Antichrist, we need to get on fire in the spirit of Christ. Amen. 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 Oh, uh, yes. yes. Look at verse 16. Last scripture. I promise. Therefore, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart because we cannot be shaken. Amen? Amen. Even though our outward man is perishing. Yeah, it's perishing. It's perishing. I had a cut on me yesterday. I don't even know where I got it from. I tell you what, it's hard uh, passing out cards at Frontier Day. I got a cut there. I don't know how I got it, but our body's perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. The spirit within us. Amen. For our light affliction, meaning what we're going through, is but for a moment. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. What we're going through today is preparing us for heaven. While we do not look at the things which are seen, don't look at the things that are seen, you'll start sinking like Peter, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That means we are to be a people of faith. We are to walk by faith. Because we are seeing the one who cannot be seen by the world. We hear his voice, though the world cannot hear. The Bible says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You may have been born a certain way, unto a certain people, a certain tribe. You may have certain characteristics. You, you may... Um, and let, let me get a little personal with some of us here. We may be always running late. <laughs> we may be always uh, making excuses. We may be always whining. I know I've been there. I'm a big whiner, right? 
But we are not called to end our life the way we were born. We are to put on the new man and to be like Christ, who was one who seeked fellowship with his, with his brethren, and he loved all people, and he was faithful to the Father. See, I pray that's who I serve with people with. And in this ministry at Grace Christian Center, if that's not you, you're not going to find a place here in the ministry any longer. Because I'm putting myself up to that standard. And if I don't hold myself, God will remove me. There, I, I've been saying this over the next several weeks. There's going to be some things that are going to be said publicly and in private meetings with, with some of us in ministry because we're not where God wants us to be. We do it our way and our timing and that's not the way it's going to work. We are the army of Christ. And so we either are going to follow Christ or you're going to end up going a different direction. That goes for all of us. Me first in line. Because I am the pastor here. I want to encourage you. You don't, you don't have to be shaken. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I need to make up for lost ground. And if you don't have that same attitude that Christ gave us, then how can we be equally yoked and serve together? You see, Jesus is giving that call to the church worldwide right now. That's why churches don't pray together and meet together because they're not equally yoked in that attitude. You cannot be shaken. You cannot dilute the gospel. You cannot take any shortcuts. My heart is grieved by some people in this church. But yet I rejoice because I know that if they hear God, there'll be a new man, a new woman. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord because I cannot change anybody. Only the Lord can. But I want to encourage you to stand on Jesus and be renewed, mind, body, and soul. You may have been born that way, but you're called to end a different way. Amen? Amen. You know how Jesus came? He came through a young girl, Mary. There were no trumpets blasting. There was no red carpet rolled out for him. He came quietly and humbly. He came. But you know how he left? Well, we, he, he, he showed his, his love on the cross. He showed, that, he showed that there was grave was empty. And he only allowed those who had faith to see him go back up to heaven. And it's only those who have faith will see him come back from heaven to take us with him. It's only by faith. Grace Christian Center, God has called me to pastor you. And as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you know a man or woman of God who truly is following the Lord, then follow them. It's biblical. But at the same time, keep your eyes on Jesus. And iron sharpens iron. We'll help each other. But we're getting ready to go into the, to the nitty gritty of ministry worldwide. And this, is, this day is a unique day. It's going to be a moment that you'll never forget for the rest of your life. I promise you this. Because Christ is about to do something great upon the face of this earth. He's going to begin to start shaking this world. But you're not going to be shaken. Because your faith is solid. It's strong. And you're hearing the word of God today. Amen? Give God praise in this house. Give God praise in this house. Amen. Amen. Amen.